right, okay, let's get started. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to it. Um, my name is Ryan Selvey, and I am your host for today. We have three different episodes of Offset. This is going to be the shorter of the three today. Hey, to everyone in the chat, thank you for being here. If you guys are over on YouTube, make sure you hop on over to Behance. Uh, Behance is where all the moderators will be moderating the chat and facilitating conversation. And I'll also be pulling questions and comments from that chat over there for our guest, Tommy. I'm really excited to bring Tommy on today. He's a good friend of mine. He's a uh, fantastic uh, cartoonist, illustrator, musician, creative, generalist, um, and I have lots to talk to him about, and we're going to try to squeeze it in to the short 30 minutes that we've got, and I'm very excited to show you guys kind of what he's got going on, um, and uh, I'm just excited to take your guys' questions and pass them along to him as well. Today is Wednesday, October 12th, and so we're an offset week all week this week tomorrow we have three more episodes like i said today we have three episodes um and it's just really great to have you guys here so hello to frank to evie oliver derek steve sean annika um rick bruce lots of familiar faces in the chat oh cody bears here too hi cody um next episode that we're having uh at 12 30 um or 9 30 pacific uh i pulled up your submission for your bear tober for your s'mores so make sure you stick around and um you uh you, you we can we can get your insight on some inktober stuff or some bear tober stuff which i'm excited to see about um anyway that's a lot of intro and talk of me and you guys see plenty of me but you don't see plenty of tommy so um it's my pleasure to bring in tommy i believe it's his first time on adobe live so please do me a favor um make me look cool and give him a very warm welcome so how's it going tommy it's Adobe Live. Adobe Live, air horn. What's up, Ryan? You're in a very dark hotel room. Oh yeah, I I, I guess I could have lightened things up. No, um, it's just it, it's not. I can oh, see you just fine. I'm just I'm worried for you. Are you are you? <laughs> you're on tour right now, right? I'm on tour right now with my band, Jukebox the Ghost. And you're just so. doing the tour life. You're doing the van life, but you're also at the same time because you hate yourself apparently. Um, drawing comics each week for New Yorker submissions, right? I'm I'm a total masochist. I don't I I, I don't know. If that's <laughs> it's that's like between me and God, you know. But um, for those of you uh, or those of our guests that aren't familiar with your work and uh, who you are, do you want to just kind of walk through um, a little like elevator sp spiel of yourself and uh, the kind of art that you create? Yeah. So I mean. As an adult, I've really spent most of my time um, as a musician, but um, I guess some, um, five years ago now, um, in early 2018, um, I, I'd i always doodled, doodled and, you know, drawn on the margins of things my whole life and um, decided to draw a cartoon every day for 500 days to see if I could, you know, unlock some new skill so to speak. Uh, and yeah, I did a cartoon every day for 500 days, which was crazy. Um, I'm prone to doing, uh, I don't know, unreasonable things like that. Um, <laughs> so it, 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 it turned out to be a, it turned out to be a great thing. Um, um, I would say 500 days, maybe a little too long, but, um, yeah. it definitely like forced me to like sharpen my skills, um, and find a voice in the medium which I had never really had before. I had done a lot of um, drawing for the band where I would do drawing requests on social media from our fans, sort of as just like a tour shtick, um, you know, where people would be like, draw the band as Lego figurines. Then I would draw us as Lego figurines. And that was kind of, that was kind of my, my only experience as an adult doing a lot of drawing. So um, doing the 500 day challenge really sharpened things. It, it also kind of, showed me the kind of things I like, which bef like drawing, which before that I wasn't really aware. Um, it got me right. really deep into digital illustration, which I had never even touched before that. 
Um, yeah, because so, you probably just work all on your iPad and in Photoshop now, right? Yeah, I, I kind of switch back and forth between iPad and Photoshop, depending on where I am and what needs to get done. Um, but yeah, and that, and that 500 days kind of spawned, kind of spawned everything I still do now, which is like, I have my general comics, which tend to be kind of like single panels, you know, social commentary ish sort of stuff. And then um, I've also got a Candy Heart series of that is, is continuing uh, over the years that I put out a book of uh, last year of just Candy Hearts comics, basically using those little um, chalky Candy Hearts that you get around Valentine's Day as a. Uh, yeah, actually, um, I can go ahead. I can I can pull them up. So let's uh, let's check. Out, let's check your work out a little bit. Let's look at your work. <laughs> Ryan, you've got above and beyond. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'll do it just for you. Um, I went ahead. I pulled up your Instagram, which is, uh, I think, actually how I found you originally. Um, I know we became friends through like Discord web comics, but um, I think I originally found you through your your Instagram. Now you have two separate Instagrams. Now you have your Tommy Siegel, which is Instagram.com slash Tommy Siegel, and this is where you have a lot of your um, one off comics. And then you also, like you were saying, you have your um, your Candy Hearts. Uh, you have a separate one for them now, right? As well. Wanna... I do. I do. Uh, currently, you know, because I was doing them all on my main account for so long, it's I'm I'm trying to let people know, you know, fairly often that there's a separate account, but um, yeah, there's yeah, a dedicated account like, just for the hearts. I don't believe in marriage, and the other person says, and yet you believe in Bitcoin. <laughs> They've just got FOMO. They've just got FOMO. Uh, I'm so glad they love my cats and taking allergy shots and waiting patiently for their death. <laughs> um, so obviously, these all come from um, I don't know some some spot in your brain that's uh personal but i also know that you don't currently live with a cat so this obviously doesn't come from your entire true life but how do you um manifest these ideas and where do you get inspiration and ideas for your comics um i just always have a i always have a running list going of ideas um both on my phone and in my journal and i'm just always kind of chipping away at it and i don't know i'll go a month without having any idea at all and yeah. then I'll just be on a walk at some point and think of like 20 and then that'll, that'll last me for a while. So, um, it's amazing. Oh. I mean, I'm sure you're the same way. It's like, it's amazing how inspiration comes in these spurts that you really can't predict. And a lot of times I'm like, you know, doing a lot of manual labor to catch up to a flurry of ideas I had in five minutes, six months yeah. ago. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. Like it's just like yeah. you have to seize the moment of the idea of like this saturated creativity and inspiration and like motivation, and then go from there. Yeah, uh, and it's like I don't even have to. Uh, luckily, with comics, I don't feel the need to like execute the idea right when you have it. Right, you can just like write it down, and then like a year later, you can be like, "Oh yeah, good job." Right. <laughs> um and then i know you just mentioned just now that you kind of have your ideas uh that you you throw down in your um in your like notes panel or whatever uh i was wondering if we could take a, a kind of deep dive into kind of behind the curtain and if you could just um i guess i, I know you, i see you have your screen here shared um and maybe we can check out some of the sketches that you have for ideas that um you're working on uh for your comics Ooh, let's see your sketchbook Ryan, these animations are fire. <laughs> Thank you. They help, are, they help keep the show going. I'll say these that. These are absolute fire. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, like, just, you know, had been having some fun with that sort of classic New Yorker single panel style. Maybe a little far side. Mm -hmm. More far side than New Yorker, this one in particular. Um, but, yeah, I've been trying in a lot of different brushes lately, which has been you know, which is new for me. I was kind of, I'm, I'm not um, super experimental with that. So wait, can you, That's can fun. you read the, the, the caption for it just in case it's too small and some people. Scream. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's, you've got this, this guy, this, uh, I'll zoom angler in a fish. on this, on this angler fish here. Oh, you've got, ew, and he has a face. Ew. So it's got okay. an angler fish and it's dangling a, a human face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the caption is 
The lady's saying to the other lady, no, you're right. He's got a cute face, but I'm telling you, something seems off. <laughs> you know, very far side. It's very funny. Very far side's back, right? Far side is back. And I think Farside came a, back, like, and then I didn't hear much about it. I heard everyone get so amped about it, and then I haven't seen any new Far Side comics. Well, it's because he kind of just posts. He posts these; they're so good, but he's really just posting like one every month or so. Yeah, um, they're not well, coming out with a lot of regularity, but they're masterpieces. They're like beautiful paintings now. Yeah, I mean, he 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 kind of was somebody who revolutionized the idea of web comics and what a comic can be through digital oh my media. God. Rather yeah. than just like the thing that you read in the newspaper. No, that's a that's a top three all time comic. Um, by the way, uh, I, I've been kind of neglectful of the chat, but you've, you're getting lots of compliments in the chat from pa Paloma said that they're going to follow you now and that they love it. Uh, Steve loves the angler fish. Uma Korn uh, is laughing at something feels off. And Bruce is agreeing with you that far side um, vibes are, are here with this one. Oh, great. So. Great. Um, let's flip through some others i've been definitely on a very like black and white grayscale new yorker kick these days so and so this um, works in a way that you you i know personally have been creating self goals for yourself each week on top of all the other stuff that you're already posting um and you're you, you create these and then you submit them off to new yorker and then if they take any of them then they run with it but otherwise then you just kind of have these leftover ones that you have used as pitches right yeah so i'm kind of treating it like you know like as a healthy dose of inspiration to keep things moving but um you know also trying to make them all be comics that i would draw anyways you know absolutely um so let's see like here's here's one i posted from my account but i had submitted to new yorker this is uh, i love this one this is one of my favorite ones this is very dumb um but you want to read kind of what it says just uh, in case it's too tiny um yeah so it's uh you got your hipster calvarista here um with the please tip tip jar and the please do not tip apron <laughs> referring to the cow now was did this come from uh driving through the country uh and seeing cows on the side of the road <laughs> or did this come from going into a coffee shop and seeing the tip jar this came from going into a coffee shop and seeing a cow yeah as the that's as, rude as that's the very rude i'm sure the barista was did not look like a cow no no the barista was a cow a, oh okay all right so this is just this is this is, this is actually i didn't life. even yeah to be honest this is just like i sit and sat in a coffee shop and i took a picture and then i traced it so this is yeah. this is what um what i was looking at <laughs> uh mervin wants to know if you have any suggestions on how to start uh with drawing as a beginner Ooh. um well if you're a total beginner i mean wow that's I, that's it's funny so like 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 I was saying earlier, like I, you know, I, I truly was a hundred percent beginner noob, um, you know, four years ago, which is wild um, to me. And like, you made so much stride in such a short period of time. I mean, that doing that daily challenge and having to actually put it out publicly, like it, it definitely like forced me to figure it out quick. Yeah. Um, no. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I wouldn't do 500 days, but, you know, if you want to challenge yourself to do something, you know, every weekday for like, um, for like a month or something, just to see what comes out and what you are inspired by and what mediums you like, like, can't hurt, you know? Yeah. So, so I, good... I would think that consistency and just getting out there and drawing and giving yourself to draw, you don't necessarily have to give yourself like a, a 500 day goal post because that's a little excessive but you you even started as a, a 365 that turned into 500 absolutely um, so i think that if you give yourself a goal you don't 365 is even pretty crazy um but even if you just give yourself like every week you want to draw something and then you go from there i think giving yourself goals that you can then meet is gonna you're just gonna no matter you're gonna improve no matter what is the thing um, yeah right now, Bruce wants to know, do you draw straight to the iPad or do you sketch and draw traditionally? Um, I draw, I, I, so for the first like year of the 
the challenge pretty much. I was drawing by paper on paper and then scanning it and then manipulating it in Photoshop. And now I mostly draw on an iPad and then manipulate and do extra stuff in Photoshop. Now, um, so I'm do you have a cover? Now. Do you have a cover on your iPad or anything? I know they have ones that like make it feel like paper or whatever. Yeah, um, I've got one of those. Um, but they, they're getting even better. So like, yeah, uh, I'm, I need to get a new one. Yeah. Do you do you know um, the one that you use by any chance? The one I use is called Paper Like, but Paper Like, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I like, uh, but I got it. You know, it was before they had it on like mass market, so it was like a Kickstarter. Oh, okay. So you're um, you're you're making sure you get your hipster points. So I think they've, I, but I think they've improved the recipe a lot since then. Yeah, the recipe. <laughs> yeah, the plastic recipe. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. I, I'm gonna um pull up a old one of your um your comics and then i wanted to see how you kind of feel about it now in Ooh. comparison to something that you have um in in i don't know in recent years and we can see um how you feel about it so let's see i'm just gonna pull, pull a random one I, i'm like back in like let's see 2019 now oh there's a 365 you had these these crazy little guys i know i'm not showing it on screen but um this is a good transition. So let's 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 transition this and then we can talk about that other product that you've got going on that you just recently launched. From this to that. So this is a guide to burb watching, which uh, you actually got into way more uh, during COVID, I know. Uh, and this one has little burb, big burb, long burb, bug burb, rat burb, and oh, a very bad word that I can't show on Adobe Live. <laughs> 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 um so that's an older one obviously uh you also have this one where does it spark joy and um this one actually got picked up by aoc if i remember yeah um uh how do you feel like your comics have changed since then um well it's funny i i had figured out a lot of stuff by this point in january of 2019 it's like it's like a few months earlier where i was still scanning in a lot of stuff and like hadn't really figured out like there's a big difference between like january of what you're looking at and like october 2018 like three months before that um so at that point i mean i've gotten i've gotten better for sure since then but you know it it, it definitely was like really different yeah um, it's just crazy to also see how intricate your backgrounds have become yeah yeah I'm, I'm i'm happy with that for sure like i i i think my sense of perspective and laying things out has gotten a lot better um, <laughs> i like that one it's Engage not very well drawn but I like, it's not very well drawn but i like the gag yeah i, yeah. I stand by that one <laughs> um so no it's just really interesting to kind of it it go across um and and become what it is now uh, and then the reason I brought up the, the burb watching was because you also have a calendar that is extremely accurate bird illustrations, right? I do. I do. And this is yeah. for 2023, right? That is correct. Um, that is correct. And so what, what, what can we expect? What kind of birds can we expect to see in the 2023 calendar? And where can people get this? Oh, the, the, these are extremely accurate birds and it's it's all backyard birds this time so it's all it's all birds you might see at your theater perched on a fence or um um you know splayed out on a branch like this eastern bluebird um, the bird next door the bird <laughs> the bird next door um but i really do um it's funny because i i am actually a birder um i just had this running it's been a running bit for a long time that um I'm trying to draw birds as realistically as possible, but that they move quickly. And so I have to kind of make these guesses, you know, as right. to what like their legs look like. <laughs> and, um, you know, a, a, every once in a while, I bait somebody into a comment on the internet where they're like, where, where they're like, birds don't have legs like that. And then I get into an argument, <laughs> a fake argument with them. Right. But yeah, that's the bit. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very high quality calendar. Available, available on TommySiegel.net. 
All right. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to link in. Also there, um, I know we're kind of short on time. Like I said, we're just flying in and out of this interview as quick as possible. Um, but the other thing is uh, you have two books that you can already buy. Um, and they're available on your shop here. If you just go to tommysiegel.net slash shop. Um, you've got the candy hearts, which you talked about. And then you also have, I hope this helps, um, which I think I have, honestly, I saw, I saw, I saw it in your apartment. It exists. Um, which actually secretly also has some candy hearts on the back of it as well, which is a little secret. Um, but, uh, but what what can you expect from I hope this helps? I hope this helps is a kind of a, a sort of a, a a commemorative document of the 500 days of comics. So it's kind of like a best of of the 500 days and also essays about what that experience was like. So it's kind of all over the place. It's a it's a it's a big old mess. Um, that was uh, my first book I put out with Andrews McMeal in 20. 20 and then candy hearts came out six months later in 2021 and so are you working on any other books now you know not really i mean i'm I'm kind of slow walking my way towards something with all these comics i I don't know what exactly but um right yeah at this point i have um you know 70 new yorker rejects that i think are pretty good so i I might do something with them now would you just call that like the the you norker or something book so yeah 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 oh that's good (laughs) that's good the you is like a flip yeah yeah the new yorker said no but the the you norker said yes yeah because that's kind of also part of your um your identity and your persona online is like this very um (laughs) uh misinformation yes ander um where like you have the the kate bush running up that hill and you're like kate bush was actually the brother of george bush and where was she during the 2003 scandal <laughs> um which i think is a is a, a funny air to have well, oh I man it's I... already 12 24 we got to close out but Whoa. um is there anything else that you want to close with or, or say before we uh we log off uh n- no um but it's also it's been so great to hang with you and and these animations in between segments and and the intro animation i wanted to say just absolute fire oh well it's not about me but thank you so much i appreciate it and i appreciate you being here um make sure every oh i I labeled you as ryan selvey you're not ryan selvey see boom rookie move now you're tommy um so you're on instagram you're on twitter you're on tiktok i put that all on the bottom is there anywhere else people can expect to find you um those are your main those are your main three right yeah that's yeah, okay. that's where to find me um and then uh obviously if you guys uh like good music tommy's on tour this month uh check out jukebox the ghost um and uh yell bird stuff to him while he's on stage <laughs> i actually the, uh, at, at the at a show the other night there was a girl jumping up and down and, and dancing the entire night with an extremely accurate birds calendar in her hand Oh, I love that. That makes me so happy. Yeah, that's great. So, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I will be back in five minutes uh, with somebody else. (laughs) Um, But thank you guys for watching. Take care. Bye, Tommy. (laughs)